Hello, my name is Joel, and we're here to talk about contributing to a New Relic open source project. So the main thing we're going to do is we're going to go over a, a fork and pull request workflow in order to contribute a change. Um, but to do that, we're actually going to use the open source website, the New Relic open source website. So first of all, uh, we're here at opensource.newrelic.com, and we're on the Explore Projects page where we've got access to Explore over 180 projects that are in the catalog of open source projects that are under New Relic's care. Um, so if I go in here and search for uh, whatever I want, tools, um, I'm gonna see lots of different types of projects. So we're gonna do actually, um, so for each of these projects, I can come in here, say in the New Relic CLI, and I can review some information about the project, track some statistics about uh, the repository and its current state, we surface things like good first issues. We've got these tags that help me identify other projects that are in sort of different types of, um, of uh, categories. Um, and we've got this uh, open source category, which helps me understand uh, what the maintenance state of a particular project is. Um, I can click here on the view repo, and then I'll land on github.com, New Relic, and in this case, the New Relic CLI. Um, but what we're going to do for this effort actually is we're going to uh, make a contribution to the open source website itself. Um, so the open source website is also an open source project. Um, so here it is, the open source project. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and look at the repo. So we see newrelic.com uh, open source dash website. So there's a couple different things I can do here. The first thing I can do is like a more traditional uh, piece of work where I could clone, um, or I could also go ahead up here and fork the project. Cloning will just let me get a read copy of the project, but if I want to actually make a change, I'm going to want to fork the project. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. We're going to uh, execute a uh, more traditional uh, fork and pull request, and then we're also going to use just the editing tools inside GitHub in order to contribute a change. And either one of these could potentially be a way that you make a contribution to a new Relic open source project. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click the fork button. We're going to get this up and running and going. Um, and we can see now I've got a fork of this project. Um, I'm going to go ahead right here and clone it and pull it up here in my command line utility. Um, and I'm going to clone it, and then we're going to get that up and running for me. And npm install, and then come back. And while that's happening, we'll, um, we're going to come back to the main project. So actually, I don't necessarily have to uh, grab the entire project in order to submit a change. Um, like, for instance, uh, we're definitely going to want to change this video right here on this uh, page because it's not actually directly related um, to the open source site. So what I could do is actually just click this edit page button, or you can find an edit page button here on the bottom of the site. And what this is going to do is take me to the open source website and to, in this case, specifically the file that's related to this particular page. We did that through a little bit of fancy uh, scripting in Gatsby. Um, but here I am. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click edit. And what happens at this moment is this actually creates a little fork of the repo and allows me to make an adjustment. And for the sake of argument, um, I'm going to just make one small change and then come back and make maybe a more significant change later. And it turns out that the data on that is going to move to over five. Um, so from right here, I can make, make uh, text adjustments and then just propose my change directly from the GitHub interface. So I'm going to offer a, 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 a semantically valuable commit message, which is uh, just a date. I'm going to click Propose Change. And then I'm going to click Create Pull Request. And there we go. Um, I can create the pull request. And if I come back here and look at pull requests, what we're going to see is my pull request is right there. It was actually created by the account that I'm logged in on. All right, so let's come back to um, 
my uh, my full copy of the site. So let's uh, look here. And then I'll let you plus this up a little bit so it gets a little bigger, easier to read. Um, you can see I've got all the content for uh, this specific project. And I'm going to run an npm start. Um, and we're going to run the uh, local co local copy of this website right here on my development machine. And you should see this thing's going to come get up and running in just a moment. Um, won't take too long. And then we're going to just verify the fact that we can see our um, our copy of the site up and running locally. To do that, I'm going to go access localhost 8000 um, just because it's configured that way. And should see in just a second. Files are almost ready to go. There's no queries. Great. Okay. So there we are. So I'm going to come back here. We should see I've got my own local copy. You can see it's running right here on localhost 8000. Um, I'm going to go scan for this open source website project uh, and see that the contents here. Um, so I'm going to open up my uh, my favorite code editor. I've now got access to all the code and I'm going to make an adjustment in the content. Um, I'm going to go find the specific file which is here in project angles and find new relic. It should be open source websites. Here. All right, there we go. Um, and I'm going to make a kind of a similar change. Um, okay, so if I, or in fact, let's do something that's visual. Actually, it'll show up on the page. Um, and we're going to change that to an exclamation point. Right now, if I look at it just as a period, we're going to change it. So it's got an ex exclamation point. And we'll see, okay, it live reloaded. Showed me that the change works. I feel pretty comfortable about this change. So I am going to commit it. So if I look at the status, I should just have one file. I'm going to do git commit. Commit all of the files that are already there. And this is going to be just a chore uh, text adjustment. And then I'm going to run a git push. And I push those changes to my fork of this site. So if I reload this page, what I should see is, all right, there we go. I had a text adjustment right here. All right, now what I want to do is I'm going to submit a pull request. So I'm going to click pull request, and we can see that I've got just this one particular, these two particular changes that are in this file. So create pull request, sure, text adjustment, and we're going to click create pull request. Now I've got another pull requests that are out here. So we should see that there, I've got this one and this one, and then I was pointing around, I did this one the other day as well. Um, so here we are, two different ways to submit changes. Now I happen to do that with the open source website, but this exact same workflow is available for, uh, is the primary way that we operate for all of our uh, public um, uh, open source projects. So if you wanna make a contribution to say something like, one of the New Relic One applications, um, or to the New Relic CLI, or to any of the tools that are out there, uh, all the work that we're doing with exporters and uh, with open telemetry, you can execute the same thing. Fork the repository, um, commit your changes to your fork, and then submit a pull request. We'll review that pull request and, um, and then merge your changes if it's appropriate into the project. And uh, then, of course, take some time to thank you uh, after you do that. So that's it, and uh, thanks so much for taking a minute to uh, follow along with this video.